What's the difference between a top 1% player and a top 0.0001% player? Well, in this 2v2 challenge, me, your friendly neighborhood, Grand Champ 2, decided to find out. For the last 30 days, I've only played with and against some of the best players in the world. Will I get stomped back down to Champ 2, or will I finally walk away in SSL? Probably the first one, but uh, without any further ado, this is the long awaited 30 days of playing with pros. One last warning, I'm much better at coaching than I am at actually playing the game. By the way, at the time I'm dropping this, I'm still looking for four more flat through champ ranked players that want to get GC or even SSL in the next six weeks. If you didn't know, I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. And if you're one of those intermediate ranks looking to get the GC or SSL title, that's what we do. So if that sounds like you, DM me the keyword GoPro over on Discord and we can talk more details about coaching. Yo guys, Luke from the future here. And before you check out the content, I want to let you know, I just sat down and put together one tip for every day in the challenge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of weave through the tips I'm giving and the footage. So you get a little bit of both. You can learn from it and also be hopefully entertaining. And at the end, I'll also go over the one thing that was consistent across every day I lost. So stay tuned for that and uh, enjoy. Okay, kicking it off for day one, we're gonna team with Lunar. Lunar and I go a bit back. He's technically not a pro, but as far as I'm concerned, he's he's like one of the highest rated rank grinders out there. So he's a pro in my book. Lesson for day one, and this is kind of like, in my opinion, the golden rule of 2v2. So we're gonna go more into the details with this stuff later. But the first lesson I learned on day one is do something different than your teammate. Surprisingly, day one doesn't actually go that bad. We played against some really good players. I think we play against Nolly, who's on Carmen Court right now, and we play against Flitz and Top Cheese, who just barely didn't qualify in NA this year. And what you'll quickly notice is the difference between when things are going good and not good at the start of the challenge. The main thing that was happening on day one when we got scored on was me doing what Lunar was already doing. Now, players at this rank have great instincts, so they're always doing something productive. But especially when you're a lower ranked player in a higher rank lobby, and this is what I noticed very quickly, I often wasn't looking at what my teammate was doing, and I'm just covering the same thing that Lunar was covering. If he was grabbing boost, I was grabbing boost. If he was pushing up. I was just kind of following behind him. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, oh, terrible. I, just I, chilling there. I pre jumped. That's my fault. And this is the easiest way to get exposed by players that are better than you. Now, at the low ranks, you can kind of get away with this. But I quickly learned that if I was going to win games, I was going to have to be productive at all times. So you'll notice the situations that do go well on day one, and we actually pick up some wins against some pretty good teams, are where me and Lunar are covering separate options. If he's doing a solo play, I'm looking for a demo. If I'm dribbling, sometimes he's looking for a demo, grabbing boost, getting position. Or if we're on defense, you know, we're taking turns challenging the ball. The easiest way to be awkward and not have a good chance, whatever situation you're in, is to just mirror your teammate. So that's my biggest takeaway from day one, but we'll break down specific situations more in the coming days. All in all, definitely not a bad start, but my actual team play needed some work. I trust you. you that was your first oh. mistake, Lunar. That was your first mistake <laughs> this game. Day two, we team up with X Pro Polar. Polar used to play for Team Singularity, and now he's actually the head coach inside my private coaching program. Unfortunately, when we did record this, Polar was only 1800, I think, in EU, which I think is right about SSL in twos. And so a lot of this was just us farming SSLs. But if I had to come up with one takeaway for this day, and this is actually super relevant to the lower rated players, it's that it's okay to ego challenge. Now, I know that might sound surprising, but what I found, especially when you get to the higher ranks, you can't just play by the book all the time. At the lower ranks, usually it's best to just be passive and patient and let people cough the ball. But when a higher rank player is making a mistake, like carrying the ball on their side of the field, showing that they don't have good control, etc., etc., you should absolutely challenge them. Oh, Puller, you I'm literally... So You've me. never seen defense like this. When I'm coaching a lot of people, I hear things like, I know you tell me to dribble, Luke. I know I'm supposed to do this and that, but everybody at my rank, they're just monkeys. They always ego challenge me. And my response to that is, 
No, they don't ego challenge you. You're just probably not that good at dribbling. And that's okay. It's okay to not be good at dribbling. I'm not the best either. But if somebody is like, for example, carrying the ball on their car, on their side of the field or in front of their net, you should absolutely dive in and punish them. Now, as an aside, you'll see a lot of this day is just me clipping and me playing confident. Oh, you guys are right. You score these. Oh, oh my lord. Oh, okay, 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 Iris. Oh, okay. And I think the take home lesson here is obviously don't ego challenge all the time, but don't get obsessed with like trying to be super smart, always being passive. There's a difference between playing smart and playing passive and it's okay to challenge people and play confident if you're convicted that you can get a beat you'll notice this is something i do really well against these like ssl rated players and we dominate them mostly thanks to polar but when i get later into the days and we play some really high rated players you'll see how my play style changes and i think it all comes back to this idea so yeah lesson two it's okay to early challenge if you're confident and uh i guess just play confident in general stay too wow that's a beautiful fake yeah yeah and, and a beautiful yeah beautiful play call puller the comms are immaculate day three we team up with Torrance Zanil and we match up against some crazy players I think at the start we play against Sathu and Atomic and even later we queue Arsenal I think two or three times takeaway for day three and this is something that I think is really important for people especially below GC like two or three tip for day three is get good at bounce dribbles I know I know this doesn't sound exciting this doesn't sound sexy but what I noticed just from watching this day three footage back is how often my goals were just from simple bounce dribbles or power slide cuts i'm i'm, I'm about to clip oh yeah, yeah 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 wait oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no. oh my god oh, and you no. know what the tiktok is gonna be healthy for one more day <laughs> That being said, you'll notice the guys who are scoring against me, like Arsenal and Wanda Mike and some of these really, really mechanically cracked players, they're all scoring in the air. And my theory is like peak offense happens almost exclusively in the air. Because when you're in the air, you could take the ball like down, up, left, right. There's no limit. But for every other situation and for you watching, the truth is what's going to be way more common than flip resets or air dribbles or ceiling shot setups in your games is going to be ground play. It sounds boring, but genuinely the only reason that I think I was able to hang against some of these players that you see here and even win, I think we took one game off G2 is because I had good ground control. Well, there's that. And then also just as Anil is insane at dues, but more on that in part two. For now, I just really want to drill home guys like how important and you'll see in this footage dribbling is especially at the lower ranks guys the ball's on the ground like 90 to 95 percent of the time in your games i remember calm even joked to me once that he thinks he could get gc without ever double jump aerialing so if all of that's true takeaway is train power slide train bounce dribbling even more so than flicks and you're gonna see so much more payoff in your comp games that's a nice. great play, Zanil. That's the play. a great oh my play. God. All you, bro. On day four, I teamed up with Jay, but the time I was playing was a top CRL player, but now I think he retired from CRL. He's going all in on playing at the pro level. And the lesson for day four is save your flip. Now, this was a little bit of a hyphenated day because basically I was just getting clipped on by Wanda Mike for most of it. But the lesson I quickly learned when playing really high ranked players is when you're on defense, you have to save your flip. This is less true at the lower ranks. So most of this is just going to apply to you higher ranked players watching. But when you are defending a higher ranked player, it's really, really important that you don't pre jump them and that you save your second flip to get a last second save as long as possible. The truth is players at the top level can place a ball almost anywhere in your net on command so if they see you flip or show your hand or pre-jump too early they're usually going to put the ball around you this is a really bad habit i had to kick you'll see me just fast aerial and try to jump up way too early a lot of times and that's why day four was a little shorter but for you higher ranked players when you're on defense save your flip it's still going to be hard to make saves against some of these players but what i learned is that's basically your best bet in most cases this is easy to save my life holy hard beat I think it's Moving on to day five, we team with Seabass. And I'll be honest, day five was one of the roughest days of part one. Not because we lost, we actually ended up picking up some games against some really good players. I think we queue against Lucian, Diaz, who we end up teaming with later in the challenge, and a couple other names. But the reason this was the worst day is because I was hesitating the most. So in that spirit, tip for day number five, it might sound stupid, so just brace yourself. Tip number five is don't think while you play. I know, especially for people who 
who want to rank up. That sounds like terrible advice. But seriously, what I learned while playing on day five was just that sometimes you are your own biggest problem in game. On day five, I remember I was trying to like conserve boost. I was trying to play really smart. I was trying to time all my challenges. And the truth is when you're playing against good players, you don't have time to rebuild your entire play style to win the game. I see this problem, especially with players like coming off of a coaching session with me, and I still fall victim to it too. The truth is while you're playing, you should just be thinking about playing. Don't think about the last goal. Don't think about a mistake you're trying to work on because the more you obsess over that stuff, the more you just get in your own head. You may have noticed days where you're just feeling off or you're not shooting as hard or all your touches are weak. And I truly believe that these off days are almost always just caused by mentality. I, I don't know if I have a clean solution to this and it's definitely something that made me play worse day five, but you definitely do have to find a way to get out of your own head and just play the game confidently. When you start to second guess, when you start to hesitate, your shots are going to be weaker, your challenges are going to get be poorly timed, and your whole play style will just be worse because you're going to be that much more predictable every move you make. Good news is we pick up a win against Taha, who's a really high-ranked SSL Twitch streamer, and I think we end on a win as well, mostly because Seabass is cracked. But yeah, moral of the story is sometimes you just got to go. That's the end of day five. Day six, I queue up with a Cruz Fifi. And by the way, shout out Shubil, the coach of a crew. I think they're top eight NA right now. Shubil's a coach in my coaching program. He plugged me up with playing with Fifi. Thank you. You're the man, Shubel. But as you'll see, day six is much better. Lesson from day six is force for your teammate. Now, many of you know what forcing is. Forcing is just when you go for a ball with the attention of not necessarily dunking them, but just getting possession. But even bigger than just forcing, the reason I think day six went so well is because I let Fifi carry me. You're just dunking him. Oh my God. Fifi, do you even need boost to clip? Um, I don't know. What I mean by that is when I'm on the ball and I'm low boost, I don't just stop going for the ball. I keep forcing, I keep challenging, I get demos, I chase the ball down, I get dunks. And really, I think this is the key with twos. The truth is like, at the very high ranks, it's rare you're going to have 100 boost or a lot of time to set stuff up. So just playing for your teammate, going just to go and kind of enabling them is really what carries you. This goes back to the golden rule we talked about with day one of just doing what your teammate is not doing. If your teammate's back, you got to go. If your teammate's waiting for you, force, do something. You don't want to make them awkward just because you are. As a bonus, I think we beat E United on this day and we play Zanil, but I'm pretty sure he beat us twice. You, Dude, like, oh like, God, nice. Fifi, like, you're either clipping on them or you're like putting the ball sitting still in front of their net uh yeah unfortunately day seven so we do queue up with andy from sonics but unfortunately i'm both lagging and andy is terribly underranked so this was basically just me lagging around the field while andy clipped on like 1750s stick but uh i don't have a lesson for this day so we're just gonna skip it day eight we team with crl player comp he might be a rank x right now i'm not sure but basically this day is just defense simulator in terms of tips like i don't even know how to describe it ba basically this day is just me trying to defend aerial attacks that i don't even know if there are ways to defend i do get better at it as we go through the series but this is just the sort of stuff where like you just have to get good at reading when people have resets what you can cover and half of it is just guessing so that's that, that that's day eight no Rip. oh i should have pressured him day nine i team with another rank x player or maybe rank a with spider i learned that not only do you have to save the flip reset from the pro but you also have to save it so that their pro teammate can't follow it as well so not the greatest news for day eight spook luke good news is this does translate to you guys watching though i think even at the lower ranks it is really important that you make sure your saves are just as precise as your shots granted a lot of people shooting isn't that good in the first place but save are an even lower hanging fruit to train here it was really hard because as you'll see i'm like saving shots that are just going back to their teammates and then if it's anywhere close they follow up and score but even at the lower ranks learning how to save the ball to your corner is really good so if you're lower ranked take home lesson from watching me get scored on a lot day eight is make sure you save the ball to your corner and uh if you're higher ranked learn how to save the ball to your corner and land on your backboard this is like a little bit more tricky but it is really useful because the truth is if you put the ball anywhere away from from your net it's really bad basically when they shoot you need to save the ball and make sure you can still get to it first and make sure you still have possession that's what i learned day eight i try to do a better job of it for the rest of the series but you'll see us get punished a lot even though spider was playing pretty good day 10 we team up with misfits k 
cash. And most of this day is just the cash show. I'm just watching him clip on Breezy and Oski and the rest of the EU pro scene. But if there is any take home lesson from me just watching cash go, it's that I could have been more aggressive. So tip number 10, and this goes for mainly higher rated players who are trying to push into like GC2, GC3 SSL. When you have a 2v1, you have to go super aggro. What I'm noticing rewatching these games like day 10 and especially some of the ones in a second, basically the only goals we're scoring are when my pros go solo or if we get a breakaway. On the flip side, when we're getting scored on, it's usually because of boost starving, sustained pressure, and just me eventually cracking. I think it's really important that while you're on offense, especially at the higher ranks, you go all in on playing offense. So this is where like my advice kind of diverges. If you're lower ranked watching this, my advice has always been to kind of like play passive second man, play at midfield if your teammates on offense and just be super safe. And honestly, that's still true. However, comma, if you're higher ranked and somehow you land in a pro lobby like this, that's when you have to seize like the more aggressive opportunities and really just go all in when it's time to. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, uh, the takeaway from this is cash is insane. On to day 11. Go cash, go, 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 go. Nice shot, come on, man. <laughs> Let's go. Day 11, we team with a bubble player called Snaz, who I think is currently on Friends, and things finally go up. The two things I fix that really make day 11 go well is waiting on saves and staying on offense. In earlier games, I had the problem of just bailing on plays, but on day 11, you'll see two things. One, I wait as long as I can to possibly make saves. This is useful because usually when players are attacking, they only have a threat for so long. Honestly, the reasons I see lower ranked players get scored on a lot of the time is just because they challenge way too early. And if there's no real opening to contest the ball, you really should wait until you get close to the net because eventually they're going to have to show you where they want to shoot it. Another fix that you'll see is me actually staying on offense. I get a lot of follow-ups off of uh, Snaz's shots and really just pressure, right? In 2v2 especially, if you're starving boost, you have to continue going for the ball, even if you only have like 40 or 50 because you got to assume the people on defense are even worse off. Day 11, we played against some really good teams. Almost every game was close, even though we didn't win all of them my play improved a lot day 11 was was a big success day 12 we team up with flit who's actually at the time i'm recording this i think he's in saudi arabia playing and i don't know what happened on day 12 but everything just started to work the trends i think are that i just started playing to my strengths so i guess the take-home lesson is for you watching go for the things you're good at that seems like a stupid tip but i don't know it's just the truth like if you watch this footage how do we score our goals breakaways me getting last second saves and like small dribbles or beats on our side of the field when people are over committing that's always been the strongest aspect of my gameplay and i think the games where i'm trying to play like mechanical or, or pre-jump or, or play faster I mean, you see, it doesn't work. I guess looking back, the better take home lesson to this would be don't be scared to play defense. Just because you're stuck on defense for a while doesn't mean you can't instantly break away and score. Oh yeah. my God, what a save. Get out, and it's in. It's just in. That oh! was just in. Holy shit. Flitz, Flitz, I'm peeking, dude. And when I played to my strengths here, you see me on defense more. You see me making these cuts and also going for like more physical play like demos. That's what I've always been good at and it tended to work. We end up getting a couple wins against Nibra and Mektos. And uh, honestly, day 12, I was just I was just on cloud nine. Day 13, we team with a rank, I think X. It might be a rank A player named Wavy. And unfortunately I was lagging and we lost a lot of footage from the day. But uh, regardless, in terms of takeaways, main takeaway I think is probably don't demo chase as hard as I did <laughs> on this day. We were playing 1800, so I get away with it. There are a lot of people out there who ask me if demoing is valid in twos. And I think it definitely is if you're close enough to the second man. You should only be demoing when you have a 2v1, and you should only really be demoing if you're already starting out next to them for whatever reason. You'll see me chase down people a lot, and when they see you coming from a distance, a good player is just gonna dodge you, get the save, and then you'll be the ones in 2v1. So yeah, only really demo chase if it's convenient. You never want to start going after a demo from like your own backfield. I guess uh, that, that, that's a valid moral. Day 14, we team up with one of my favorite pros, Calm. You may have seen him on the channel before, and I love playing with Calm because he's just so good at making it easier for me to play. I think one of the big problems people have, especially like when they solo queue and they notice their teammates like miss a ball or, or whiff, is they look at it and say, how could my teammate have done better? When in reality, like any good player I play with makes it noticeably easier for me to keep up with the lobby. You'll notice how Calm holds on to the ball, places the ball really 
well, buys time. And it's just these little things that like the top, top pros do like calm. You don't realize which make a huge difference. You'll notice on this day how small mistakes like me missing boost or me jumping too soon leads to us getting scored on. So I think the moral of the story is small mistakes or small advantages really build, especially at the high levels. Unfortunately, we go slightly under 50% win rate, I think, on this day. But since we were losing to players like Gyro and LJ, who are literally some of the best in 2v2, I'm not too mad about it. Moral of the story is pay attention to the small things like collecting boost and buying time for your teammates because you might be able to have more impact than you think. Finally, on to day 15, we team up with Corrupted G, who's currently coaching Rogue, I think, and who played RLCS for many, many seasons. Unfortunately, I was lagging super hard on this day. We even matched up against Kronovi and we couldn't get a good game in because I lost so much of the clips to lag. I was so bummed about this, but we'll definitely have to get Gabe back on the channel because he was a lot of fun to play with. Maybe a coach crossover would be entertaining. As promised though, I wanna wrap up day 15 with the one thing that was consistent across every day I didn't perform well. In the end, I think that thing was confidence. I know you may have heard people talk about how you have to play confident before. I'm not gonna give you an inspirational speech about this. I genuinely just believe from the games I played, Rocket League is a game where you have to play confident. Since everything is so split second and at the high level, mechanics are so automatic for all these pros, you don't have time to think. It sounds crazy, but as much as I like to like analyze the game and come up with ways to improve, the higher ranked you get, the more you just have to rely on your gut instinct, recognize the patterns and reacting as quick as possible. As a coach, I think the push up until GC is something that's very, very coachable. It's very much principles based. You can kind of set up some rules and figure it out. But as you can see in these higher rank lobbies, anything goes. Players mechanics are so good that you really just have to do little things to put yourself in the position to maybe make a save. Things like saving your flip, waiting till the last second. These little positional rules give you a chance at hanging on, but it's still no guarantee because players are just that good. Anyways, those are my takeaways for the first 15 days. Comment down below, guys. I want to know what was the most valuable thing you saw in this video or the biggest light bulb moment that you had watching this because I know it was a blast for me to record. If you're still watching this, it probably means you're around here often. So hey, if you're day one, I want to let you know I actually just started posting again on my Instagram. I'll have it linked on screen and linked in the description. But if you made it till this point in the video, go hit me up with a follow because I post short content about stuff like this way before it makes it out to the YouTube. Other than that, that's all I've got for part one of 30 Days with Pros. So stay tuned for part two, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace, guys.